Hey everybody, welcome back to Final Resonance TV and my third episode of Musical Journeys. Today we have Lisa Williams with us, one of the only female rock guitarists I know in Huntsville, <laughs> Alabama, which I'm so awesome for you to be here today, be a part of this. So I'm, thanks for coming. Really, really thank you. Thank you for having me. Sure. And Lisa has a great video I want you all to check out. Um, TEDx it's called. Um, Ted's is, is a bunch of different videos, inspiring videos, and I'm going to put it in the uh, description below. Just link to it, watch your video. It's a, a great story about her life and about her uh, American dream and that she's achieved. <laughs> and she's here with us today. We're going to talk about her musical journey today, though, and uh, go into like your background. Um, your family background, as far as music goes, where did that start? What, what, what point? What do you remember, like the very beginning? Well, you know, I don't. Um, neither my my father or my mother you know, did much music, but I think I think it all it all began with as a, as a young teenager in church, and uh, you know, picking up the guitar and just wanting to, you know, make music. Yeah. And and I remember, you know, I think everybody remembers your first guitar or your first instrument that you have, and I remember as a teenager, my um, my I, I told my mom I wanted to play guitar, so she took me to the at the time, we were on the on the bass, so it was called the PX. Okay. And uh, you know, I got my first guitar, which was a Yamaha acoustic guitar, and it was two hundred dollars, which is a huge amount of money. Right. Um, and the fact that you know my uh, my mother, you know, bought me the guitar meant a lot to me. And then I think like most of us, most most of us, we still have that first instrument. Right. Right. And I still have that Yamaha guitar, which which is very dear to me because my parents spent you know two hundred dollars, which was a lot of money, so that I could learn to play music. So why did you, did you, was there something that inspired you to get, want a guitar in particular? I, I, you know, again, just making music. In high school I was in the band. Right. And I played the flute. Okay. And uh, hard to play the flute in a rock and roll band. <laughs> <you> <laughs> right. uh, so, right. so, you know, and I wanted to make music with other people. And guitar is one of those really cool instruments. You can play by yourself and make music, or you right. can play with others and make music. You know, the flute is a little harder. Right. You know, right. I mean, it's like, okay, you either are playing the instrument or you sing, you can't do both. Right. But you know, guitar, you can play it, you can sing, you can play with others and sing too. Right. So that's right. what kind of inspired me to play the guitar. It's kind of golf. <laughs> you can do it by yourself. That's you can right. Do it with yeah. 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 That's yeah. a cool, that's a cool, cool yeah. analogy yeah. too. Um, so your bands, when you started, what was the first kind of band? I mean, you were in band. So I guess there were bands or things that you worked on before at that point when you were playing guitar. What did you do with others when you were playing with others? When did you first start doing that and who and what? You know, I started uh, I started actually, you know, as I told you, in late 2005 after we sold our, our company. Right. Uh, before that, I, I just didn't have time to do any right. music, really. Right. And so after we sold our company, I said, you know what, I really want to get back into music. Right. And so I said, I'm going to give myself two years to, you know, you know, get my chops back up and, and, right. and kind of figure out who was who and to figure out how do I get into a band and how do I play in a band. Right. You know, because before that I was just, you know, playing by myself or just with one or two people and we're just kind of sitting around, right. you know, just, just hitting just, tunes. Right. But I'd never been in a band before and so I knew that I would have to figure out, you know, what to do and, you know, and it's really scary. Um, you know, I remember the first... Like the first day of school. I, yeah, yeah, it yeah. is. And um, meeting new people. Meeting new people, and and you know, again, not being in a band uh, ever, it's really it's really scary because you're afraid. You know, am I good enough? And you know, the, all these other people are so much better. And and even before that, you know, my husband Phil is a really great guitar player. He's, right. he's a great musician, and so I would jam with him and his friends, and and they were all, you know, such high caliber players like like you. Oh. And Thanks. so somebody starting out like me, you know, it's very intimidating. Right. And so I, I just remember, oh my gosh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm playing with these guys and all I can, you know, play is a couple of songs. But, you know, what's amazing about people who are really honest about the music and really want to help others. You know, they, they all wanted to help me be a musician. Right. And, and that's really neat. You want to hang out with people like that. And there yeah. are a lot of people like that. It just takes courage to say, "Hey, can I can I play with you?" Right, right. Because you're always thinking, "I'm not good enough to play with you." Right, you know? right. So, so I, yeah. So I. But that's at every level. I mean, everybody everybody feels like that. I mean, all the way up to the top. I mean, you know, <laughs> I mean when you're at the top, you're probably thinking, "Geez, I really am in over my head or something." But yeah, that, yeah, that's crazy. So, so one of the things we were talking about earlier is your influences. 
let's go ahead and say that again. Who your who your big influences are? Okay. Well, I, I would have said my favorite guitar player uh, is is David Gilmore, and uh, again, I I just love the way he solos. I love I love the technique that he uses. It's you know you know it's not about playing fast. It's about you know making making the, the the person listening to the music really listen to that solo. Um, so uh, I just I just I just love his playing. The, right. the, the tones that he gets, right. uh, you know, it's just it just hits me. Yeah. Well, you know, they, they're big lush leads yes. with the huge delay and verb and it just sounds with a melodic line it's just beautiful yeah it's like we said earlier we were talking earlier about neil sean has that same kind mm -hmm. of huge vocal sound that that gilmore has and that they yeah. both have that it's such an amazing uh both of them are, to me anyway were awesome players and mm -hmm. you said Bassamana earlier too joe Bassamana, yeah bonamassa is, is my is another favorite of mine again i think he when he plays he just makes the guitar sing and, and the solos they breathe um the bends that he puts in there just he's know. got all the chops he's, but he also does that yeah yeah, yeah he's yeah. got a good mix yeah yeah that's kind of like the guys i always like the guys that could do a little bit of everything they weren't just one thing or the other i mean there's probably like Yngwie would probably be the only guy but really when you dig into him you find out that he's actually not much more than what most people think he is he's a lot more than that mm -hmm. so you were telling about some unique experiences but i just want to dig any other musical experiences? Just give me like the top experiences that you've had musically, whether it's a concert or a, or anything in particular, meeting someone or. Um, I think I think for me the thing that I've learned and and I try to pass this on to other people who who are intimidated by music, or, or hanging out with people who play music is, you know, don't be intimidated, right. um, and 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 people. Just like in, in my industry of engineering and business, you know, want to mentor, I think musicians are the same way. Sure. And, and I try to be that way just because I remember what it was like to be very intimidated by playing with other people. And, and you know, you never will play with others if you don't ask and say, hey, can I play with you? Right. And, and again, I was very fortunate to be able to play with, you know, um, people who were really really good and and kind of said hey you know come come and hang out with us um, that meant a lot to me I think musicians are that way we are we're, yeah. we you know we 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 all came from a place in the beginning where we had nothing really you don't have very many skills to start yeah I mean, you know just you're not just born with right. some people are may have better aptitude mm -hmm. but I don't think that anybody with a guitar doesn't have to go through that period of learning how to make your fingers move and yeah, and yeah. cooperate with your brain and that's just something you've got to do like yeah. Steve Vai said if I you know is I should be a better guitar player because of all the time I've spent on it you know even one of the greatest says this that mm -hmm. it's, it was a, an effort yeah and it's, it's always an effort it's true yeah um, when, when you see people out there making it look easy uh, it's because they've spent a lot of time right, right you know just if you spend enough time it does become natural in some way and then it does look easy oh yeah, um, yeah. But, but I noticed that you know I, I still film myself, right, playing to, to, for promo and for other mm -hmm. reasons, for quality reasons, obviously. And as I've been doing more acoustic gigs, I was never that comfortable with acoustic. But what I've done is I've filmed and filmed mm -hmm. and watched, and I can see it trans. I'm starting to move more to a more natural state with it. Yeah. And you can just see it. But that's doing it over and over and over. That's just doing it consistently that's and over true. and over. And that's that's the biggest thing, too, that I had to say, is that you have to just keep, keep yeah, plugging. Yeah, we, we talked about keep the plugging. Yeah. I mean, 10,000 hours. 10,000 hours, you got to do you gotta, it. you got to do the time. There's no other way. That's right. No other way to get there. So your favorite tools of the trade, what do you, your your guitars? Okay. I, I'm a humbucker girl. I've always been. So, you know, PRS uh, guitars that I love, uh, you know, you can pick up a PRS and it's going to be in tune. It's going to play well. And I just love the feel of it. I feel very comfortable with it. Um, also, I love Gibsons. Mm -hmm. So I've got, I've got a Gibson collection. I've got a PRS collection. Um, just recently we talked about it. I added a Stephen McSwain guitar, which is called the Red, White and Bullets. <laughs> and love that guitar because you know I've always wanted a red, white, and blue guitar. And it's custom made. It's custom made and uh, fits fits my hands. Feels right. good. Right. So cool. Those, yeah. 
Great tools, huh? Yes, great tools. So I've got these like five questions that I always ask. And okay. I'm going to ask you these questions. I changed one of them for uh -oh. you. Okay. I like to change it up every show a little bit. Um, the first one is, this is in one word, describe music, what it means to you. Oh, I would have to say just joy. Yeah. You know, I mean, because, um, again, music is, is something that it truly does cross the boundaries no matter, you know, what I have found in, in, in this very political world right now, mm -hmm. people have beliefs on different sides and they may argue about, you know, what they believe and, and what the other person believes. But it's amazing about when you sit down and you play music with somebody, all of that goes aside. Right, right. Because, you know, <laughs> it's all about us doing something together. Right, right. And, and so when you share music with each other, uh, you know, there, all that stuff doesn't matter. All that stuff, you know, it's just it just doesn't matter what you know what color you are, where you come from. Mm -hmm. You know, when you make music together, you're building something and you're making something together. And uh, so I, I just say it's it's joy. It really is. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. So we we talked about this a little bit. The state of the music business. What do you feel about it? And you know, you and I talked about the way it was when we were young versus the way it is now. I mean, how do you feel about where we are, where it's going, you know, that kind of thing? I think that, well, I, I don't know. I mean, in that it depends on what you want it to be for yourself. You know, we talked about, um, you know, I asked people, who, you know, what does making it mean to yeah. you? And I'm not sure if I always get an answer on what that means. Right. Um, you know, for me, making music is, is sharing what I can do to you know to make people dance to make people smile it's, it's kind of my way of, of um, you know, just sharing who I am in a positive way right uh, people you know when, when, when people hear music it you know if it's their kind of music it, it makes them feel good right and right. and right. if you can you know bring some happiness you know, out there and uh, when I see a live concert you know, I get up and I sing the words and I, you know, dance to it and, and I, it makes me feel great. And I want to do the same thing when we play music. Right. You know, I want people to feel that same thing. And there's something about live music that is really different than just listening on the radio. Right. You know, I mean, you can hear a Journey song and, and it's great, but when you see them on stage, you know, it, you, you feel it and you see it. Right. And I just hope that that's what that's what I want to bring when we play music. Right. It's that kind of thing. Right. So the, as far as the business is concerned, the way that music's delivered these days versus the way we got it back in the day, like you know, there's so much of it. Um, how do you feel about all that? Whether that's good thing, bad thing, you know, the kids today, how they are taking music in, you know, the live thing. Because I think that, you know, like you just said, you and I were touched by the live thing. Mm -hmm. We've always known the live thing. Mm -hmm. And, and I still think there are kids that do, you know, yeah. but, I, but I also think they're kind of disconnecting a little bit from it. And uh, so what do you think about that? You, you know, I with think... With the phones and the... Uh, that's you true, know, you know, and... Um, I mean, and we all do this, but... Well, I would tell you that my son Tyler is, is a musician also. He's okay. a drummer. His parents okay. are guitar players, and so he that. chose the drums. Awesome. Um, but he has started, you know, to, to recognize the, the music... Um, of the of, of our days, oh, yeah. uh, you know, which is to me, it's classic rock. That's mm -hmm. the Beatles also. Um, but when he started actually playing music, mm -hmm. then he realized that uh, he's he's always been, you know, um, a, a guy that he. I mean, you know, at, at three years old, he was listening to the Eagles. He loved the Eagles because he's, you know. Right. But um, anyway, you know, he's gone to to a Journey concert, and and I think he's just realized how how really cool it is to actually see musicians. Right, wow. And so as a musician himself now who plays music and has a band, um, he really does appreciate being able to see live music and to hear live music. Right, right. And, and I think if we can, you know, as as parents um, kind of expose our kids to, to that, right. I think I think then it won't be lost on them to just listen to the MP3s and their headphones. Right, and, right. You know. They need some exposure too. Yeah. And then that takes care of it a lot of times. Yeah. I think that's when you see somebody young around town, and that's one of my next questions is your advice to young musicians. I mean, what would you say is the most important thing for a young musician? Again, you know, don't be intimidated to 
to play with people that are better than you because I used to think well why would you want to play with me because you're so much better but you know as musicians we, we we like playing music with each other no matter you know what what stage of sure. music and um, and you can't grow without that's right I mean you know like you, you you go to school to learn from a teacher yeah and that's what you do with somebody who's you know, more advanced. They're a teacher. They're a mentor. Yeah. They're somebody that can give you, yeah. you know, at every level of your development. Uh, Dave Anderson said it a while back when we were together. He always, not always, but a lot of times put him in, himself in a situation where he's the youngest. Mm -hmm. He's the one gaining most of the information because he's being mentored yeah. by people. So it really helps for that to happen. And um, what else? Anything else you can think of for... Um, I would also say, you know, just just know that um, people do make it look easy when they're good in in any occupation, any field, uh, any anything. Um, and when you look at them and, and and you think, oh, that's natural, or you think, oh, they're you know they they're they're just great, and you know there was no effort. Um, you know that truly is a myth. Right. Everybody has spent a lot of time to get where they're at. So understand right. that, you know, if, if if you want to make it look natural, you want to be, you know, as good as Jeff, oh, you, yeah. you know, you got to, you know, put in the time and, uh, again, just have fun doing it and, and play with people who want to have fun too because then it becomes an experience, not just, okay, I'm going to learn my scales or I'm going to learn this song. It becomes a truly experience that, that you know, you're making... You're making something happen right there, and uh, it's, you're making it's, memories with each other. You're making memories, and and it's a bond that when you make music with somebody, yeah, it's, it's it never goes away. Right? Yeah. You might have a falling out. Exactly. But it doesn't matter. Yeah. Because like with my band from 27 years ago, yeah, we had little things along the way, mm -hmm. but we still love each other like brothers. Yeah. And and, and we're connected by this for this whole time, mm -hmm. and we still talk to each other. And I, we wouldn't have done that. Yeah. There was no way if it wasn't for the bands and the music and all that. So, when you create things, whatever it might be, what, what's your process? Do you have like a, is it like you go in a room by yourself or, or how does that come to you when you might be writing or you write a little piece of music or? You know, the iPhone is a wonderful thing because right. it has that little recorder <laughs> on it. And I remember sometimes just things come and uh, I remember even being at Guitar Center one time, I kind of heard this thing in my head, so I kind of went in the bathroom and just recorded it in right, there, you know, right. so uh, I, I guess it can, it can be anywhere and, and any time, just, 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 just capture it, because, uh, you know, it, maybe it's just me getting old, but I'll have this tune, and I'll go, yeah, I'll remember that, because it really is cool, but then, I, you know, just an hour later, I'm like, what was that tune again? Yeah, yeah I do that in five minutes. Yeah, I'll exactly, playing the so same part. that's why I say the iPhone is a, is a wonderful thing to capture ideas, uh, lyrics, tunes, it whatever. It does. Saves it all. It does. I do it all the time. Yeah. I do it all the time. So, best practice uh, for playing live or just being a musician in general? Like, something that, that you would say is a best practice to, to continue that. Mm -hmm. Well, let's see. Um, just like what you do, I do I do video of, of our band, and, and a lot of that is, yes, it's for promotion, but a lot of it is to, to look at what can I do better. Yeah. Uh, what can I do, whether it's... You know, when, when you play music in front of people, it's a show. You you are you are a showmanship up there. Right. Um, people don't want to see, right. you know, just a person playing. They want to see a show. Right. So so I I video just to look at okay, you know, stage presence, right. um, uh, mistakes that I that I've made sure. and could do better, sure. um, and also. You know, um, I think for me, like the mistakes, yeah, it like it, it, what it does is like by videotaping it, mm -hmm. it like reinforces that and for me to remember that, yes. And then I go back and go, okay, now hone down to that issue, mm -hmm. fix that issue, and then you're like just fixing pieces, you're not going through the whole thing, right? You're honing down the little sections, and that really helps me to, to make my time that I put in mm -hmm. efficient, you know, we work a specific problem <laughs> yeah, yeah and video is that a big thing to that that's true and, and I remember one you know again for for people who are who may be starting I remember a, you know a, a light bulb moment for me I remember when I first you know the band I, that I was playing in wanted to do uh, you know hit me with your best shot mm -hmm. and I listened to that first riff and I said oh my gosh I'm never gonna be able to get that what I realized was so I spent every day 
mm -hmm. trying to get that riff at mm -hmm. the beginning because mm -hmm. I figured I'm never going to get it. So I spent, you know, every day and I finally got it. Right. And what it dawned on me was, you know, I can play any song out there right. that I want to. Yeah. I'm just going to have to put time, time into, into it. it. Right. Right. So, because before then I thought, you know, there's going to be songs that I can't play. I just can't. But I realized, no, you can do it. It's just how badly do you want it and how many hours do you want to spend on it. And it goes for just about anything, right? Yeah, Even in your business. It, exactly. So so it so when 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 that happened, it was a, a revelation for me in that there's there's not anything that I can't play. It's just do I really want to put in the time to learn it? You yeah. know, I you know, it may take me it may take me, you know, two days to learn it where it takes you two hours mm -hmm. but you know you still learned it. I'm still learning it. Oh, exactly. <laughs> Does it matter? Yeah, yeah. I mean you still you everybody has to do that. It, it's a it's a process that we all have to go through. Even Steve Vias said that in one of his videos that that you have to kind of imagine yourself getting it. Yes. And you have to work it until you get there and then he, I think he said one of the things he always said and this is goes right to what you're saying is that the joy he got in playing guitar was that he could take a thing like this song that you wanted mm -hmm. to learn and he could make it happen and that his joy was in making it happen yeah when he finally you know you can get a concrete result from something like that something you know like if in, in a business you you get a, a contract or a sale or whatever yeah. you've materialized that by the hard work that you put in and, and effort you put into that so yeah that's yeah. true and and uh, you know also I, I I really feel really happy when I and I, I tell you I, I get a lot of female people or yeah. females that come yeah. up to me and say wow you know that's really cool that you play guitar that is cool and 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 uh, because you're, and as far as I know, you know, Cheryl plays acoustic in town, and mm -hmm. you play electric. Mm -hmm. But I don't really know any other people who are playing in bands that are playing electric or running a band. Mm -hmm. There's only one other female I know of that's running the band. It's Emily <laughs> Joseph, and she runs her band. Um, but you're the only one that runs a band and plays electric guitar. Wow. And that I know of. I mean, there probably may be other people. <laughs> but I mean, and if there are, let us know. But I, I think it's really cool. And I, what do you think about, like, the you know, over the last five uh, to ten years, you know, there's been a much more, um, like, Grace Potter mm -hmm. or Lizzie Hale or um, Oriante mm -hmm. or Nina Strauss. There's all these females that are rocking these days. I mean, that's a really cool thing that I think's happening, and, and I, don't, I don't know why it hadn't happened before. But, you know, and you're in a your local example of the same thing. I mean, how does that make you feel when girls come up to you? And, it's 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 great because it does give me an opportunity to to say, you know, I mean, again, you know, I've worked hard to do it. You know, if you if you want to do, do it, that. do it, just do it. Right. Um, and and sometimes it takes seeing somebody do it to go, yeah, you know, I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna try that too. Um, so I, I I I'm really inspired when when I do get, uh, you know, the females that come up and say, you know, really. I really, I've always wanted to play guitar, and now that I see you do it, and I say, well, you need to do it. It's never too late and never too early. Just do it and have fun at it. There's so many resources, too. I mean, and there's, that's how I find all these girls, is I go online, <laughs> and there's amazing females playing all kinds of genres of guitar. I was on last week, and I saw this young girl, and she was just ripping, and I was like, I see it every day on YouTube, yeah. and it's amazing of all ages. It's really a great thing to see. And I'm glad you came today because that's one of the things I wanted to get across to everybody that you're a great female role model, oh, and I'm glad you're in our city, and I'm glad you're out there rocking with the rest of us. And I really, you know, am happy you came over today and spent some time with us and with our viewers. Thank you. <laughs> so you guys subscribe to the channel and check out her TEDx video about her life, which is a very inspiring story about her American dream. I think it's very pertinent to today's society, what's going on, and how you feel about, you know, the, the journey you made in your life to be able to do even something as simple as playing guitar. Oh, absolutely. You know, it, you know that's the amazing thing about the country we live in. Uh, you know, I, I have not seen people say you can't play guitar because you're a female okay. you know that would be a limitation that I would put on myself but no one has put any limitations on me right. and and 
that's something that I think it's really important for for females, males, just anyone to understand that no one can put limits on you. Uh, you know, if, if you if you think somebody discriminates against you because you know you're a girl and you can't play guitar, that's that's something that's on their side, right. not on your side. Right. Um, you know, sometimes when when I'm loading in, and I think some people naturally assume that I must be the singer in the band because I'm female. Right. And then when you know when I tell them I'm the guitar player, they're like, oh, you know, and and I don't see that as people, you know. Um, saying, well, you can't be a guitar player because you're a female. I see that as my opportunity to educate people on, um, you know, when, when you see a female, it's okay if you think, you know, she's the singer because that's, that's key right. to a band. It's common. But, but um, now, you know, you will look at females in a different way and that you'll, you'll say, well, maybe she could be the bass player or the drummer or the guitar player or sure, whatever. Sure. And, and that also, uh, again, it's, it's just an opportunity to show people uh, a different perspective. And, and I don't ever, you know, think of people going, well, you know, you, you stereotyped me. Well, you know, sometimes, yeah. um, sometimes it's good to, to be, just to be able to be positive and open up people's eyes to say, well, no, I'm, I'm the yeah. guitar player. You can do that, and, right? and they're like, hey, that's cool. Well, you can do that. Well, you know, Prince has been doing it forever. He's had female backing bands. Yes. And they're killer. I mean, some some killer females, and I think you know that is an awesome thing that 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 has been going on for the last decade. That it's been more and more of that. It's just so cool to see. Um, again, thank you for coming to the house today and, and spending some time with me on the show. And uh, this is Lisa. Y'all go see her. Go see Jedi <laughs> if you're local. And if not, look them up on the internet and uh, check out some of the stuff she's got online. There's a lot of videos and things you can check out. Thanks for hanging out with us. Thank Rock you. on, y'all.